Good morning students. Today we are going to learn about written communication. Written communication is a process where we are using letters and words or a readable code which has to send through a writer to the reader. So it is these are the messages which are recorded on a durable surface so that the reference to the material can be done throughout. So it's an exchange between sender and receiver who can read and write. So written communication can only be possible if both the reader and the writer are literate or both can read and write efficiently. We in written communication, we are using few codes. Probably we have different languages or writing scripts. These are used so that the message can be sent or understand. So to put it in words, we can say it is a communication process or written communication is a process of conveying a message through written symbols. In other words, it's a message exchanged between two or more persons that make the use of written words. So the whole process can come up to written communication. We are mainly writing the things or the message information and ideas we want to exchange with the other people. So this is what written communication is all about. Now let's understand that what are the features or characteristics of written communication are. First, it is a very creative activity. Mainly writers write then rewrite the messages and can change the message as uh, on the base of the understanding of the reader. So based on these factors, the message is drafted which needs a creative aspect of the writer to frame the sentences and to structure the whole message in a way it is easily understandable by the uh, reader. Then it's very time taking process because in one go the message cannot be drafted. We need to keep on editing and clear the uh, technicalities which can cause any kind of doubts or confusion in mind of the uh, reader. So it's a very time taking process. Then along with time taking it's very costly as well. It needs professional writers or uh, it needs people who can convey the message where we are not using our gestures and postures with the tone of the message written so that it reaches to the reader in efficient way. So having the durable surface where we have to draft our message and people who can actually draft the message in an efficient way involves a lot of cost which makes the whole written communication process very costly. Then it is free from mistakes because we can write and then change the letters or we can change the message. So it uh, at the end output it is very uh, error free uh, message we can get in hand which can be sent to the reader for further references because it is a advantage also for the uh, written communication because in oral communication rectifying the uh, uh, doubts or rectifying the problems is very difficult but in written communication before the message reaches to the reader we can change it then it's very reliable source because it is mainly error free so you can rely on the text because already uh, evidented and recorded so the reliability and validity of written communication is much more than any other method of communication then but we get a delayed feedback because in written communication mainly it is a one way communication where we are putting our words in surface and we send it to the reader reader takes their time to read through and understand the message based on their understanding level and then they send the feedback which takes a lot of time so the feedback the uh, uh, writer needs to get to comprehend the changes and put it takes a lot of time so the feedback is delayed so the characteristics which this uh, written communication keeps is it's a very creative activity it takes time it is a costly process 
but it's error free and most reliable source. Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantage of written communication. Advantages are what benefits it's going to give to the writer and reader. First one, it's a permanent record. Whatever we are writing, it's going to stay with us forever. So whenever we want to refer back that what was the communication happened, their conclusion, their effect, the action needed to be taken, everything can be seen and everything can act as an evidence because the record is permanent. Second, it acts as a valid legal evidences. That's why mainly all the contracts or all the decision making happens in written communication because it acts as a legal evidence. So if there is a lawsuit or if there is a call from uh, the court, it can be provided as an evidence of the communication part. Then it is suitable for complex and lengthy messages. If we have to send a very lengthy message to our reader, then we can send it through written communication because based on the time availability and understanding of the reader, they can take their time and peace to understand the piece of message. Whereas uh, in oral communication, what used to happen that we are sending a lot of message in one go to the uh, uh, listener and most of the message is lost in between because of distraction, which doesn't happen in case of written communication. So the complex or difficult messages can be sent through written communication so that the uh, reader can understand it based on its time and understand. Then it fixes the responsibility. We can easily find out from where the message start and who has sent the message in hand. Whereas in oral communication, we cannot do that because oral communication doesn't have any record who started the conversation, where it went and what all different matter has been added to it, we cannot figure out. In written communication, it is very precise, well written and a proper record is documented. That's why it is very responsible way of sending the message where we can easily find out who is the source of the information and to whom it was addressed to. And it helps in building the image. As in written communication, we are putting in the words without showing our gestures and posture. It shows the real human being and it builds an image for the writer that how efficient communicator the writer is. These were the advantages of written communication. Now let's see the disadvantages of written communication. One of the biggest disadvantage of written communication is not suitable for illiterate people or people who cannot read or write. To those people, we cannot communicate through written communication at all. In those cases, we have to depend on oral communication to make them understand the matter. So for the people who cannot read and write, written communication is a very big issue. Then it's a very time consuming process as we have discussed in characteristics as well that in written communication, we need time to draft a message which can cater to multiple people at a time because the audience or the readers who are going to read our message and understand it are from different level of education. They are from the uh, different level of personality, attitude. So catering to everyone at the same time is a very difficult task. So to drafting a message which can cater to everyone's need is a time consuming process. It is very impersonal because face to face interaction is not there. You don't know what is the mood or attitude of the person who is going to read your message. So that personal touch or that social connection between the reader and writer does not develop in case of written communication. It, it is less confidential. We cannot keep our secrets intact because anything which is documented or recorded, there are chances that it will be available to the people who are not supposed to get access to that particular information. Mainly in the organization, when we are discussing or when we are keeping some record of our businesses which need to be kept inside, may leak out to our competitors which may act as a uh, issue for our organization. So, the confidentiality of the message decreases in case of written communication. Then storage problem. 
in written communication we need a lot of storage because the evidences or the documentation keeps on piling and if we have to refer back to something we have to search for the information the particular way so storage is a big issue we cannot store a lot of written communication in a particular place then it's a, a costly process it involves expert it involves material uh, and it involves other resources also so that we can uh, draft a particular message for the people so it's a very costly process it involves a lot of cost uh, the feedback is delayed the feedback is not instant as it is one way process the feedback feedback is delayed and we cannot get the feedback instantly from our reader they will take their time to read whenever they are available for the material to refer and then after going through the whole material they might write a feedback or they might send a feedback to you which is going to be few days few uh, hours or months it's not an instant uh, communication between the writer and reader and last one it requires skills not everyone can write a good message or efficient message which can be easily understandable by the reader it needs writing skills people need to understand that uh, to cater to multiple variety of people around they need to draft a message which can reach everyone equally as we know the perception attitude and behavior of people are different it differs from person to person so catering to everyone's need is a challenge which requires a lot of skill so having a skilled person to write a message is a difficult task and not everyone can do it so these were the disadvantages of written communication now let's go through the principles of written communication means what are the ways through which we can uh, lower down the disadvantages a bit or which we can keep in mind so that we are developing the skills of writing there are seven principles of written communication those are clarity completeness conciseness consideration concreteness courtesy and correctness let's understand these one by one the first one clarity the clarity of message totally depends on the writer the writer should be very clear about the message that what they want to send to the reader if the writer is not clear about the content or having doubt about the content they cannot draft a efficient message which can be easily understandable by the leader so these uh, messages should be very clear the content on which the writer wants to write should be very much understandable by the uh, writer first then only he will be able to make it uh, understandable by the reader next one is completeness the message should be complete in all sense we can the writer cannot assume that the reader might be knowing the message once he finished it so the finishing or completing the sentence is a task of speaker they need to make sure the sentence is complete in all sense so that all group of readers can easily understand it so if the sentence is not complete it's going to create a lot of confusion for the reader then concise as a time factor we cannot have elaborated uh, messages written because everyone is now time constant they don't have a lot of time reading the things the reading span or the attention span of readers are very limited that's why the message should be very concise and uh, uh, short and simple so that it reaches to the reader in one go it should be very short simple and easy to understand next consideration consideration we need to consider that what type of uh, reader is going to get the message based on the qualification based on the ethnicity culture or uh, diversification we need to keep in mind and we need to consider all these aspects while drafting the message that to whom we are sending this particular message to based on that we can draft it then concreteness the message should be very concrete to the point so that the exact message what of exact thing you want to translate to your reader can read in that particular way it should be very concrete it should be very precise 
then curtsy curtsy means because we cannot use our gestures and postures in written communication we cannot have in verbal cues in our written communication the reader might not know that what is our particular mood is while writing the thing or what uh, we want to convey are we happy are we sad or we angry so these things we can show through our writing so using the curtsy for example thank you uh, good morning good afternoon or sorry all these words helps you uh, help the reader understand that what exactly the tone of your writing is and based on that they develop their perception towards you then the last one is correctness the message should be correct why need to be correct because as we know the written communication is the most reliable source of information if we need to make it reliable or valid we need to make sure that the message is correct in all possible senses the information we are drafting it should be correct or legible in all ways so the correctness is one of the principles we need to check through while writing uh, a message or information so that other person can rely on it or believe the fact you are posting so we have learned the principles of written communication and the principles are the message should be clear it should be complete it should be concise and considerate the message should be concrete uh, 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 concrete curtsy and correctness should be adhere when the message was drafting now let's understand what are the different types of media available when we want to send the message in written format we have print media and electronic media in print media we have internal communication and external communication internal communication happens within an organization when we want to interact within our employees and workers and management so within the organization when we are trying to communicate through written format we use internal communication methods that are uh, letters emails chats manuals newsletters we are going to learn about all these ahead of this session then external communication external communication is mainly done for the people who are outside our organization and there are huge in number so mainly mass media communication methods are used for external communication like posters billboards brochures uh, mobile billboards so the newspapers all these are used for external communication for reaching out the people outside organization like our customers shareholders stakeholders etc now let's talk about electronic media electronic media is again divided into synchronous and asynchronous media synchronous media is where the reader and the writer are in front to each other and they can instantly uh, exchange the messages for example emails or instant messaging chats where we can uh, talk or uh, uh, in written format we can uh, chat with the i mean the writer and reader are connected to each other instantly at one point asynchronous media means where the writer has to wait for some time to get the feedback or the message back because the reader and uh, writer are not instantly available to chat with each other at a time for example like a uh, discussion forums or social media networking uh, emails blogs it takes a lot of time you write something today and you might be getting the messages day after day so it's not instantly so we have seen in print media we have internal communication and external communication and in electronic media we have synchronous and asynchronous media now let's go through what are the different media tools we can use to communicate what are the media tools media tools are the way or media tools are the medium through which we are exchanging our messages with each other in organization Uh, if we talk about internal and external there are lot of mediums through which we can communicate we are going to talk about print as well as electronic media here so let's start with the first one that is memo memo is a uh, abbreviation or short form for memorandum it is an internal office communication exchanged by employees for different purposes like if they want to discuss about instructions suggestion or information inquiries so they 
issue a memo to each other then letter letter is a formal way of communicating when you want to inform a set of people or a particular person about the changes in the organization or a request then we go for a letter the next is notice note notice is a very short version where we want to uh, convey a very concise information to our employees we put up a notice mainly the information like a urgent meeting a holiday or uh, something which came up urgently for the organization we put up as a notice so that it gets into uh, the attention of all the employees or management available then the next one is circular circular letter is a kind of letter which has which is a uh, meaning of circulating among the employees so for circulating means when it is a purposed for a particular group and the message has to be sent to the people within a group but the message is bit long it is not concise then we send a circular letter then it comes report report is one of the written source which contains a lot of data it is a kind of a lengthy message which involves the data collection which involves your conclusion which involves your findings and suggestion so it's a very big or very uh, a huge documented file which uh, sends the whole uh, report about your work next one is manuals manuals are uh, it can be instruction manuals it can be policy manuals it it the mainly the purpose of manuals is to send you the guidelines of how to particularly doing a task or what are the changes in the organization in form of policies and all so that the employees Uh, all the employees can read and understand the thing uh, mainly we have seen manuals coming with the electronic gadgets where they send us the whole instruction of how to particularly doing or installing the uh, thing next is bulletin board bulletin board is a kind of a board which is put in the organization and where day to day messages will need to be sent through the organization are put so that the employee passing by can read and understand what are what is going to be done in the organization how they can contribute to it then emails emails can be sent to one person at a time or multiple people but the uh, purpose of emails is to personalize the message based on our readers requirement so it is sent through our electronic media through computers so that is why emails allow uh, us to send the message cater or personalized for a particular person and plus we can attach few of the material as well with the email like if we want to send a audio a video a letter or any form of other documents like pdfs we can attach and send through emails so email is not only sending a message but with the material needed to uh, attach to the person also can be sent then instant messages instant messaging is online real time communication between two people who are not near to each other so uh, users can easily log in uh, and simultaneously they can chat or send messages to each other and get the feedback instantly chats chats are another way of instant messaging but mainly chats happens between the company people and the customers when customer want to interact with the company to resolve a, a query they contact through chat and real time uh, feedback or res, uh, uh, resolve uh, uh, resolution can be sent to the uh, reader so chat is one form where instantly the problems or the conflicts can be resolved then press release press release is a written format where the company is sending messages to the outsider where uh, they want to cater to a uh, millions of the people outside our uh, stakeholders customers and all so news me- news media is used to the for the press releases then next is brochure brochure is a uh, paper document or a booklet where we are sending our promotional material for our customers advertisement advertisement we have seen on newspapers magazines and all these are mainly short films pictures uh, about a product or service we want to provide to our customer websites 
where customer can visit us and interact with the company are the website it is web based technology and the last one is social media which is nowadays very efficiently being used by everyone to interact uh, social media caters as uh, uh, synchronous and asynchronous as well social media is one of the best uh, written communication tool proved to be nowadays so with this we came to an end of the session in this session we have learned about written communication written communication as we have seen it is a, a written format or we can say it's a readable code exchange between sender and receiver who can read and write so it is a written form of writing or sending our information and ideas to the people then we spoke about the characteristics that it's a creative activity time taking costly it's free from mistakes it's reliable but we get the feedback delayed then we spoke about the advantages and disadvantages of written communication well, our written communication has a lot of advantages like we can record uh, or keep evidences permanently it acts as a legal evidence as well it is suitable for when we have a lengthy or a complex message then it fixes our responsibility and it helps us building our image as well in where in other hand we have disadvantages of written communication it is not suitable for people who cannot read and write it is time consuming costly impersonal and we it also causes storage problem it is a cost uh, delayed feedback it provides and it requires professional skills also the principles we have discussed that um, written communication should be clear complete concise considerate concrete uh, it should have courtesy and correctness and then we discussed about uh, the different types of media that is print media and electronic media print media we have internal and external media whereas in uh, electronic media we have synchronous and asynchronous media and finally we discussed about various tools available uh, in our uh, written communication medium what are the different tools we have discussed here we discussed about memorandum letter notice circular letters reports manuals bulletin boards emails instant message chats press releases brochure advertisement websites and social media so with this we came to an end of today's session thank you